In this key concept video, I'm going to talk about plotting functions and then some of the um, functionality that I use when I am in here in the graphing section of my graphics calculator. I think it's very important to get very comfortable and familiar with this section. It becomes very useful for mathematical models exam questions. You can pretty much use your calculator to solve most types of questions in the mathematical models questions uh, as opposed to trying to solve them by hand. So make your calculator your friend um, and it will be extremely helpful down the line. Okay, so I'm going to use this particular question that's out of the mathematical models question bank as an example and then I'm just going to run through some of the um, <clears throat> some of the functionality that I like to use in my graphics calculator. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to plot this function here. So how I got to this screen originally, if you are brand new to this particular calculator, I go to this blue graphing button and then press tab to create a new function. And my first recommendation is always to use x as the variable. See how this equation here, this function here has t's. You'll have different types. You'll have t's, you could have z's, you could have u's. However, I tend to always just use x's. So for this one here, I just enter this in. So minus 2 x squared plus 20 x plus 8. Okay, now more often than not, the graph isn't visually appealing <coughs> after you first enter it. And that's just because the zoom settings on your calculator aren't quite correct. So the way that I like to get a nice look at the function, I like to zoom out to get a high level picture. So I press menu zoom, zoom out, and then just keep clicking until I kind of see the key points, which is usually the intercepts and the turning points. So you can see here, I've probably zoomed out too far, but I don't mind doing that, because then I go menu, zoom, and then I go to zoom box, and I just drop a box over the area that I'm interested in, which again is the intercepts and the turning points. And I'll probably do another box again until I have a nice view of what I'm interested in. And just be careful, um, once you have the box, it, it won't, it'll uh, stay as the box on the mouse. So I tend to go actions and then back to pointer. Okay, so now I can drag this around. It has a nice view of the function. So that's the first step about setting your window settings. Another method to get the zoom correct, you could go into menu, zoom, and go directly into the window settings. Now I tend to use this when I know my X min, my X max, my Y min, my Y max. So for example, if I know that there's an investment portfolio and, it, and it's gonna go up to say $50,000, well I can put my Y max at $60,000. Sometimes you don't know the, the mins and max or the domain and range is the proper word. And that's when I would use zoom out and box. But if I do, I'd go straight into the window settings here and enter them in directly. Okay, now that we have the zoom settings correct, I'm just gonna run through some of the buttons that I like to use, some of the analysis functions. So it's all in menu. Now the first one is trace. I don't use this this much, however, it sometimes is handy. So trace and then graph trace. This just plots the coordinates. You can see the coordinates down here. Now I don't tend to just, I don't tend to just do this very often. That's pretty cumbersome. But one cool tip is if you can go, let's say I want to, uh, find the equivalent y value when x is 7. Well, you can just enter 7. See how it says x equals 7, then press enter, and that'll drop that coordinate to that point. So the equivalent y value is 50 when the x value is 7. So I'll just, I'll just do that again. Let's say I want to find the y value when x is 10. So the y value is 8. So that's handy when you, when you want to know the equivalent y value for a particular point. Okay, so going back into menu, I've shown you trace. I don't use any of the others, to be honest. Everything else is in analyze graph. So zero will find the x-intercepts. It's a very common thing to do. So for example, in this one here, zero, it asks you for the lower bound. If I'm gonna, I'm gonna find the right-hand x-intercept here, so where the blue line crosses the x-intercept. Lower bound, you drop to the left of it. Upper bound, you drop to the right of it. And right there, it shows you the coordinates of that x-intercept. So zero is very handy. Next one, menu, uh, analyze graph again. So the minimum, the maximum for the turning points. In this case here, this function has a maximum. It's an upside down quadratic. So I'll show you how to do this one. Maximum, again, lower bound is to the left, upper bound is to the right, and it tells you the coordinates of the turning points. So this is a quadratic. This particular question is the height of a ball. 
I mean, you could by hand go and solve the turning point of the quadratic, but with the graphics calculator, it tells you in five seconds what the turning point is, so it's very handy. Menu, analyze, so I've talked about zero, min and max. Now, intersection is the other one. Now, I don't have two functions here. I'll just go and put a second function in. So to put a second function, just go tab, and I'm just gonna do a horizontal line at say 15. Now I'm gonna show you how to find the intersection between the red line and the blue line, and I'll show you the right hand one. We go menu, analyze, intersection, lower bound is to the left of it, upper bound is to the right, and there are the coordinates again. Now that's very handy when you want to know when one equation is equal to the other equation. You could use simultaneous equations by hand, however, I find it even easier just to plot the two functions and find where they intersect. And I think that's about all I wanted to show you. I mean, there are some other ones around uh, differential calculus and integral. However, for the, for the main purpose of these mathematical model questions, these are the four key analysis tools we use in addition to graph trace. And that's about all for this key concept video. I recommend trying some of the mathematical models questions in the question bank section.